that required. Chemical reactions. So chemical reactions basically happen all around us, right? They happen all around us. So what are chemical reactions? Okay, we're gonna we're about to basically explain. It's a chemical change in which one or more substances are either destroyed and one or more new substances are created. So we destroy the form of a, ke a chemical substance to change it into another form. It's not like we, uh, the, the substances that we start with are gonna be, uh, are gonna be destroyed uh, completely and they don't exist. No, we, we actually change it to another form, right? Good, as, uh, as you'll see right now. Yeah. Good, so these are chemical uh, sub substances. So, to give you an example of what a chemical reaction is, Let's take, for example, an uh, oros. Oros is a chemical, uh, a, a sort of like a chemical, a, ke a chemical reaction on its on its own. Um, what happens uh, inside a car, for example? It's a chemical reaction uh, between the fuel in the car and then the oxygen, in, and then they uh, combine together to form a combustion reaction. Hence, th that's what makes the, the pistons in the car uh, uh, basically. Uh, turn and then your car goes so that's a chemical reaction so before the reaction look let's look at this diagram before the reaction there was two hydrogen gases and two oxygen gases remember these are diatomic elements and then they reacted together to form what to form two molecules of water one and two can you see can you see that all the elements, the number of elements that we, that we started with did not change. This side is called the reactant side. Né? Basically, the reactant side had one, two, three, four hydrogens. And then it had one, two oxygen. The product side still has one, two oxygens and one, two three and four oxygen. So that, that's basically what happens in a chemical reaction. Yeah? Good. In a chemical reaction, we have the, the, the chemical substances that you start with that are broken down and ch we change their form. Those are called the reactants. Yeah? The reactants, substances that are destroyed by, chem by chemical change. So what do we do? We break the chemical bonds between them and then we rearrange the form of those uh, elements. Or substances then the products such the substances that are created by chemical change so basically after we break those uh, chemical bonds with the air new ones are formed to form new products we call them products of a chemical reaction now the arrow in a chemical reaction means what it means the yields the, basically there's something is produced that's what a yield is now. good please please I, be I beg of you, never, ever, ever in your life, because in grade 9, we're going to be doing a lot of, especially this time, chemical reactions. Never in your life, in a chemical reaction, use an equals to sign. No, it's an absolute no, no. We use an error. Good, let's continue. Now, other sim symbols in a chemical reaction will include S. For example, if, uh, for example, they put, let me see, let's use the water reaction H2 uh, gas plus O2 gas to give us let's say H2 O uh, uh, liquid good so near the subscripts there will always be these letters if you ever see these letters the S will mean that whatever is formed or whatever is used as a react reactant is a solid the L will mean liquid. The G will stand for gas. And then the AQ will stand for an aqueous solution. Basically, an aqueous solution is basically the substance that is dissolved in water. So I see here, my reactants consist of two gases. Né? Hydrogen as a gas, oxygen as a gas, and then they form water in liquid form. Basically, these uh, signs will tell you the state 
of the, the substances. Then we have the plus sign in between, as you get, as you can see over here. We have a plus sign. Let me see. Here. We have a plus sign over here, and yeah, that's it. So what does the plus sign say? It separates two or more reactants or products. Then the yield sign, which is the arrow, separates the reactants from the products. That is that. Now, in a chemical reaction, what do you, so we, we see the following. We see evidence. If you want to see, uh, see that a chemical reaction is taking place, there is evidence that a chemical reaction has taken place. The first one will be light or heat. Most chemical reactions emit uh, light or heat when they happen. Now, for example, a good example of that is the sun. The chemical reaction that happens in the sun emits light. That is the radiant energy that our plants use to photosynthesize. So it comes from a chemical reaction. It emits light and heat. Then the second one, temperature change, right? So when a chemical reaction takes place, it can change the, temp the, temp the temperature. Now, either it will increase or decrease to the uh, to, uh, in relation to its surroundings. Yeah? So basically, we, basically, sometimes when you mix certain uh, ke certain, certain chemicals, temperature increases or decreases. And uh, a simple experiment that you can do at home is just take salt. Uh, where's my red? Just take salt and then add it to ice. See what happens. And then if you have a thermometer, measure the ice, the temperature of the ice before you pour the salt. And then pour the salt in the ice and then measure the temperature of the, uh, of the ice and salt together. You'll see that the temperature decreases. It's, it's even lower than it was before. So basically, that reaction is NaCl plus uh, H2O. So that is your chemical reaction. That is how they change temperature. Some ch chemical reactions can increase the temperature. For example, when you react a metal with uh, with acid, the temperature decreases. That is what we call an exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction when the temperature decreases. Then the third evidence of a chemical reaction, the formation of a gas. And how do you know that a gas has formed? You'll see bubbling. There will be bubbles or an odor will be released. For example, Ever poured um, uh, the Mentos? Uh, or is it Mentos? You you kids that use Mentos and and then uh, throw the Mentos into a Coke. What happens? Bubbles. Yeah? You see bubbles. That means a, a whole lot of gas is re is released. Yeah? Even in the Coke within itself, because it's carbonated, it, it releases the carbon as a form of gas. That's the form of that is an evidence of chemical reaction in your stomach, in your whole gut. Chemical reactions take place. And after those chemical reactions take place, to prove that they have taken place, at some point you tend to fart. That is an example of or evidence of a chemical reaction taking place in your stomach. Then the fourth evidence of a chemical reaction is color change. Usually when a chemical reaction takes place, the color changes due to the formation of new substances. For example, rust. With rust, iron will react with what? Will react with oxygen. Yeah? Oxygen in the presence of moisture to form rust. We'll get to do that later on. So the color of that metal of iron basically changes. That is, an, that is a good example of how basically a chemical reaction has taken place. So these are the evidence that chemical reaction will take place. And the fifth one, formation of a precipitate. You won't get to see the uh, see this uh, much, but a formation. What is a precipitate? Is a new as a solid form that basically suspends, especially with when you deal with two liquids, it suspends in liquid. We call it a precipitate, a solid that forms uh, from the reaction of two aqueous solutions. Yeah? We call it a precipitate. Then. With chemical equations, we can write them either as word equations or chemical equations using chemicals. So when we write them as word, basically they are they're like a statements. We use word 
ways to write the chemical e equation. For example, iron reacting with chlorine. Iron as a solid, S stands for solid, and then chlorine as a gas. What happens? They form iron 3 chloride. So that is a word equation, right? Good. So solid iron reacts with chlorine gas. They combine to produce solid iron ion 3 chloride that is a word equation you write the equation in words let's take an, e an easy one water reacts uh, hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water so what is that so we're gonna you're gonna write hydrogen gin as a gas reacts with oxygen remember they exist as diatomic elements so they must be in gas in gaseous form then the product it, uh, they, they will yield water yeah? that is h2o that is water yeah? as a liquid done that is a word equation so how do we translate now this word equations into what into uh, chemical equations we take those words iron because iron in the periodic table has a certain uh, symbol, we write that symbol, and then uh, we, we, if we know, we, we're going to say it's iron in solid format, plus chlorine. Chlorine, remember, it's a halogen. It exists as a diatomic uh, element. Then chlorine gas, and then the arrow, which yields iron chloride as a solid. So, so you see now, we can translate all of these into uh, into into chemical equations the word equations into chemical equations so later on we'll give you for example let's say hydrogen again i'll use my example again. hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water or hydrogen oxide what or had, yeah what is the chemical equation you're gonna write for me hydrogen because it, it exists as a diatomic element you write h2 Plus, as I guess, oxygen is a diatomic element to give us hydrogen chloride, uh, hydrogen oxide, sorry. Hydrogen oxide is water. So, H2O liquid. Done. That's how you translate the word equations to the chemical equations. I think if, uh, uh, right now we have revised everything we've revised everything now the next lesson now we start with the periodic table now we move into this terms work then